Apologies for starting late. We got special guest Adolfo Tex in the house. What's up, guys? Anyway, so this is going to be a fun podcast. We got a fitness expert who's going to answer all your uh, fitness questions. And this one is Natty, actually. He has not done any steroids. We made him do a drug test before coming in, and he passed with flying colors. Oh, well, he did test positive for some beaver tranquilizers, but we'll get to the bottom of that later. Um, anyway, so let's show off with a short introduction, give the guys a little background about yourself. Yeah, so um, I actually didn't start out as a fitness coach. I used to run a business actually related to graphic design. I had a graphic design agency, um, and I did that for like three years. It did really well, but I was always really into fitness. Now, what happens is that I tried different fitness coaches back then, like offline, online, and I was always very disappointed with the service that they provided. And um, eventually, uh, I, I found out there was a lack in the market for like a really good uh, online fitness coach that did like something really personalized. So, yeah, like things, uh, people I networked with and everything, everything make me, made me take this decision uh, a couple of years ago. Okay, I'm going to dedicate myself full-time to this, to online fitness coaching. So that's what I've been doing for the past uh, couple of years. All right. I think uh, it's going to be good for the audience to see the before and after pictures. So I'm going to send them to you, Nitin, and put them up on the screen. Uh, these are, this is good stuff. So, oh, email, okay. Okay, okay. And then, okay, I'm, I'm going to send, send you the message. Yeah, I want to put this up on the screen. So while you load that up, uh, give a little background. Why were most coaches sucking? So uh, the thing with a lot of the online fitness coaches is that they say that they are going to do a, a personalized program, but unfortunately they do the same for everyone. So they have millions of followers. Uh, they don't have time to be, you know, doing something personalized for everyone. So when I was inside, you know, the fitness industry and met a lot of these, you know, fitness influencers and, fitness influencers and everything, uh, there are great people. Don't get me wrong, but a lot of times they are saying, you know, that they are working on your workout program or they're working on your meal plan and they actually have someone else that they pay and that person does that and that person replies uh, via email to the, to, the peop- to, to the clients, you know, when they think that they are actually talking directly with the, uh, with the person. So, yeah, that's what... Why does it have to be customized? Because everyone is different. Like, for example, some people may have genetically big legs. They don't need to train legs twice a week. They may have, like, you know, thin arms or, or small, small shoulders. For someone else, they may have genetically, you know, bigger shoulders, even without training them a lot. But maybe, you know, they don't have a defined six-pack. They don't have chest. So everyone has different uh, strengths and weaknesses. That's the first part of, of different ones. But the first part is, is really muscular uh, insertions that are different for, for everyone. Um, and apart from that, everyone, I'm sure you've heard of the term like a hard gainer. I don't know if you are familiar with this or the term or other people that, you know, gain weight very easily. Mm-hmm. There is these two different types yeah. of people. Some people may need four days of cardio in their, in their week. Other people, if they are a hard gainer, you need zero. You know, it's different for everyone. If you want to, and everyone has different goals. Some people want to, to be the huge jacked guy. Some people just want to look athletic. There's like a myriad of different uh, reasons why, you know, it must be personalized to, to you. All right. So aside from the cookie cutter stuff, what were some of the other issues you were seeing with uh, fitness coaches? Bro, like coaches, Photoshopping transformations, <laughs> uh, saying that transformations were natural when they were like giving SARMs or steroids to their clients. I've seen everything, man. I've seen I've seen everything you you can imagine, really. Give a few more examples. This is like an interesting topic. What are what are like some things? Like let's say a guy has a fitness coach. What he should what should he watch out for? Um, he should. I if I was a client again, I would talk to the other people that are clients. I would and I would compare our programs mm-hmm. maybe. Uh, before I would I hiring a fitness coach, I would certainly talk to his current clients, like the transformations that he posts, like. He should be posting the names of, of the people. Like, uh, it's if it's really legit, um, he should be posting the names of the people. I would reach out to them and I would ask, so is, is this really legit? Like, how was your experience? Was it indeed natural? Uh, is it indeed how you look like, like, like this? After three or four months, do you still look, look like that? Or was it only like a peak 
mm. uh, and then you fall off because it's not um, how do you say in English um, sustainable. Mm. Uh, I would ask all of that to his current clients if possible before uh, before signing in for the program. So sure. Did were you able to pull up the uh, the before and after pictures? Yeah. You got the, so you got you guys are seeing this. It's a pretty pretty. You you sh you shared it on the screen, right? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, so it's a pretty drastic change, I think. No, no difference. And how long did that take you? The first time I went to the gym was like 10 years ago. But the first years, I was not really consistent. Um, I'd say I started being consistent in like 2015, like six years ago. Dude, you imagine where you could be at if you got on some, uh, some steroids? You got yeah. Some testosterone, some HGH? Bro, every week, it, it crosses my mind. Like It's pretty funny because I take shit and I'm like less jacked than you and you're yeah. natural. I mean, yeah. It's one of the people <laughs> leaving, you know what I mean? So I think what this means, the big lesson here, I think the big takeaway is that I just start injecting more shit. That's, that's the big lesson here. <laughs> but that's the thing, man. I know other people that are natural and they have been training for like less than me, the, the less years than me, and they are bigger than me. Like it's all down to genetics also. Right, like, it right. plays also a big role, I have to, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, there's a whole bunch we can cover with like fitness, fitness habits. We'll leave that to the guys to asking the questions. What I really want to focus on is the motivation aspect of it and the game aspect of fitness. Yeah. Because again, you know, everyone knows, you know, fitness is like you heard hypergamy. I mean, hy hypertrophy. This is this is how much uh, Rolo has fucking nonsense has uh, you know affected my thinking. No, I mean, yeah. um, um, hypertrophy and uh, you know, calorie surplus, calorie deficit. I think there's nothing like too exciting there. What I want to focus on is how have your results changed with chicks since you got in good shape? Oh, bro, like drastic, like night, night and day. But um, it's, I think it's like money. You can have a lot of money, but if you don't play your cards right, you know, you're, you're not going to get the most of it. There are plenty of rich guys, you know, who don't, who don't have any success in dating. And I think it's the same with fitness. Like you can be jacked, but if you're the guy that's, that like, for example, let's say you use online dating, you use Tinder, for example. If you're the guy who on Tinder like conveys, like is like a gym rat, like you only post gym selfies. It seems that he has like nothing else going on in his life. It's just gym, gym, gym. That might turn away some girls. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's not only about being jacked. It's about, it's all about you, how we convey that. If you're jacked, and, you know, you post some pictures on a waterfall. You have, like, a nice lifestyle and stuff like that. <laughs> on a <it>, waterfall. <laughs> yeah, just as an example. It paints a picture on, like, the, the, the girl's minds. Like, okay, this guy is not only – he doesn't see only Jim in, in his life. Like, I'm not going to go on a date with him. And he's going to be on the phone counting the calories and stuff like that. So that was always for me, not only because of that'd be funny, like eating a girl. How 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 many calories does your pussy have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it why is it not on my fitness ball? <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> we have to stop. Um, yeah, but that was always very important for me, not only because of girls, but I, you know, like because of my life. I always wanted to pair uh, being in good shape but not to be the person that goes out and like, oh, I can't drink a beer. I can't have a dessert. I always wanted like to have a good balance. And uh, you asked about dating. I think that's very important. Being able to, you know, have a nice physique, but not take it to the extreme where it's actually detrimental, uh, you know, when it comes to, to dating and all of that. Can you give some examples of how like fitness is? Because I can tell you for me, one point I noticed is one time I was with a chick and this was like two years into training. I took my shirt off and she was like, wow, you have a six pack. And I saw her get turned on. I was like, oh shit, there's, a, there's something to this, right? Yeah. So do you have like any experiences like that where just really quick? Yeah, man. So for me, something that really turns me on is like having a girl, you know, just escalate on me. Like I don't like to be the guy that like has to do all the chasing and all of that. And, uh, you know, obviously with like Instagram and, and stuff like that, what, like when my Instagram started growing and, and the TikTok, I started getting some DMs and uh, it, like it's a different reality. It, it's like different from like meeting someone, I don't know, from Tinder that you go on like a normal date and stuff like that. Like when I met someone, you know, that maybe she sent me a DM, it's like she had the opportunity to meet me and like she was grateful when we actually went on a date how much do you think of that, though, as being in good shape and how much of that is status? Because you have, like, 500,000 uh, followers on TikTok. Uh -huh. So how much of it do you think is uh, which? A big part. A big part for sure. Uh, I, I think it's the two together, but, but mostly the, the clout, mm. if you will. Um, but, man, like, 
when when like you know I took my shirt off for the first time, whatever, like in front in in front in these examples, it's like insane. It's like um, I don't know. It's a reaction that it's it's amazing. It's amazing. It it motivates you and any of my clients, any anyone that works out when they see a girl they're they're dating, not even like. Uh, for the first date, like uh, your girlfriend, your wife, whatever. When you see a reaction from the opposite sex, such a good reaction uh, to your physique, uh, for me personally, like it motivates me, like to keep uh, working out more and more. Yeah, mm. it's one of the it's one of the reasons for sure. You, you got any like crazy stories about uh, I don't know, chicks sliding in your DMs and shit like that? I know you mentioned offline, you had a few. Yeah, yeah, I have a few. Like I, I, I'm, I'm not. Sure, I, what I can share, you know, like no, no, uh, we're not we're not gonna share any names, but let's yeah. not, like keep keeping like privacy stuff out of it. Yeah, um, let me think of something. <laughs> so uh, there was this one time that uh, uh, I was getting like I was checking my my DMs and uh, I have this message that the girl sent me like I don't know two weeks before or something like that saying like oh i'm sure you won't read this but i just wanted to say i live in the same city as you and i really wanted to meet you and um i don't know she, she had a, like a private profile and i couldn't like see any pictures mm -hmm. so i didn't i didn't, I didn't want to follow like I, I didn't knew her so i just asked like right away like send me some pictures of you so i can see like uh you know um you're not a, like a serial killer or something i mean some like Excuse to for her to send me pictures. Because only fat girls can be serial killers. <laughs> and um, and yeah, like so she sent me some pictures, and yeah, she she was like nice, like I liked how she looked like, and uh, like we chatted for a bit, and then I just forgot about it because that week I was like with a lot of work going on, and um, because I had like a lot of messages to reply. Then I was like uh, doing like a cleaning of like. Um, my Facebook group and my social media of like ghost followers, you know what I mean? People mm -hmm. that are like not act active anymore. And uh, the thing it is, it was our last days there. She was going to travel and she was DMing me like, oh, let's meet. I'm going to go soon. And I had to finish this work. So what I actually did, I actually messaged her and I told her like, hey, um, so I don't know, like we can, I, I had some work I really have to finish. So if you want to meet, uh, you know, maybe you can help me with those tasks. And she was like, totally down. She was like, yeah, let's do it. Uh, I'll help you with the tasks. So we met like, um, and I brought two phones and she was like helping me with the other phone, like with, mm. with the tasks I had to do mm. for literally like three hours. We were like no talking. Oh damn, you made her like your little slave. <laughs> Nothing. She was uh, like doing the tasks. And, um, and, but I, I was like, I was looking at her and like, she was really attractive and, um, eventually, you know, things escalated. Uh, we started talking, like things escalated after like three hours of work mm. and, um, and, uh, she told me, Oh, before we do anything, by the way, there's something I have to tell you. And, and I'm like, what's up? I have a penis. And she was like, Oh, uh, I have a boyfriend. And I was like, oh, really? And she's like, yeah, yeah, for, for like six years. And I was like, okay. And she's like, oh, it's fine. It's just that, you know, this can't get out of here. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. And, uh, and yeah. It's rest. fun. I'm just hoping you could wear his hat while you fuck me. <laughs> yeah, the rest. Wear is... a token of his clothes. Uh huh. Like videotape it. Yeah, for me, for me, I had uh, it was actually fairly recently. I got my first little taste of uh, clout, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it was uh, I had a female coaching client, and I coached this chick. And this is gonna sound like kind of fucked up in some ways, but I was coaching this chick. You know, I helped her a lot. Like she had some things, uh, and then you know, I was like reviewing her. I'm like, wow, this chick is actually pretty hot. Yeah. And it just turned out that she lived in the same city as me. I'm like, mm, all right. And then you know, the end of the phone call, I was like, I was like, you know, I can probably like hook you up with some of my friends. And she's like, yeah, sure. And I was like, it's, why don't I just hook her up with myself? <laughs> like cut out the middleman. So I was like, yeah, you want to grab a drink? She's like, wow, I wasn't expecting this. She's like, I didn't think you'd be interested. I'm like, yeah. And then we grab a drink. It was like the easiest like hookup ever like she was just like so it, she was like into it already mm -hmm. i didn't have to she was like yeah she's like i watch all your videos so i know all your games so we can just like skip past all that i'm like all right, yeah I like the sound of that and so i was like after that i was like you know what 
this is fucking awesome. Like, yeah. This is exactly how I want all my hookups to go. With me putting in almost no work. I've never, I've never been the guy that enjoys like doing the work. I want like, I want all the rewards without any of the work. That's uh, yeah. That's my uh. Um, yeah, like for me right now, to be honest, I'm at a stage I don't know in my life, I guess, where I don't, I'm not like looking for like I don't know one night stands or anything. Like, uh, I if if a girl nowadays tells me, yeah, I'm I'm just staying in the city for like I don't know three three days or or, or something. I don't. I'm not really meet up with. Yeah, her I'm, anymore. I'm the same way in some sense. Yeah, like I, 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 nowadays I just meet a girl, you know. We might not be boyfriend and girlfriend, but I see a future of some sort. But I think even there, even with girls that you know, you may want to meet, you know, to be girlfriend or, or be dating, but longer term. Even there, having like a stronger, you know, like uh, whatever presence, social media. She sees that you take care of yourself when it comes to your body, whatever. Even there, I think it helps like a ton. It's not only for like you know hookups or, or whatever. Mm. Yeah. Well, what, what's, do you have any other like good stories? Anything else that stands out? Uh, yeah, man. But this, I, these are like two like per, like I don't know. I don't want to share too much. Otherwise, uh, it like it would be easier because we are like friends in common or something like that. Oh crap! You know, like mm. okay, okay. Yeah. Let's let's take a few questions and then we'll, there's a few other topics I want to cover. Yeah, and then maybe you guys can peer pressure them into sharing some of those good stories. Yeah. Just put like a one in the chat. If you want Dolpho to get into the nitty gritty stuff, along with showing some <laughs> pictures and videos, yeah. Do you have any questions so, so far? Right, let's take a few questions, and there's a few other topics I want to get into. What's his diet? So I'm a big fan of um, first high protein. That's like obvious, uh, but a big fan of high carbs as well. A lot of people say the carbs are the demon. Um, I personally don't agree. I've seen very good results with high carbs, mm. low fats. My clients low have, fats, low fats, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why low fats? Just because you don't need more than like 25 30 percent of your calories per day. Uh, but don't, don't fat. all your hormones like testosterone doesn't all come from fats, exactly. But anything above 30 percent of your calories, uh, it's not going to be used by your hormones. So yeah. you're, you're not a fan of like the keto, the bulletproof diet, right? 100 no. percent. Okay, no. That's probably I'm not a fan of any like extreme diet that that puts away an entire food group puts away all the carbs, puts away all the meat, all the fish. I'm not, I am a fan of like equilibrium, like balance. Um, and keto is definitely a part well, of it. What, what do you think about the fact, not to get into like a diet debate, that like 10, 20,000 years ago, they didn't really have any like carbs really. Like it was yeah. just like all like beef basically and vegetables, like proteins and vegetables and like almonds and like nuts and shit. Like yeah. how would you like kind of? I mean – 20,000 years ago, they also didn't have a shredded six pack or uh, they didn't have the, yeah. the gym. It, it's totally different. It's mm. totally different. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Uh, okay, so the diet you're saying is it's like a little balance of everything, right? Yeah, like higher in protein, higher in carbs, uh, lower in fats. I keep the fats mostly, you know, when you wake up, uh, before you go to bed. From some studies I've read, that's where it benefits testosterone the most. Because, yeah, most of my clients are guys. But um, why? I understand why getting the carbs in there can be beneficial and the protein, but why Why not keep the fats high too, like high? It's like I tell you, like anything above 30%, there is se several studies that prove like your hormones are not going to benefit anything from that. Mm. Do you think it can be detrimental as well? Not for the hormones, but definitely for, you know, your physique. For sure. Really? Yeah. Uh, I'd be very interested to see those studies offline. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely want to definitely. look at that. Because my dad is probably like 50% fats. 40% protein, 10% carbs, something like that. Yeah. But again, I'm not really eating for training. I think if I was eating for training, I would definitely have more carbs in there. Yeah. Uh, mainly eating for like health and like dealing with my autoimmune issues. Anyway, what's the what's the next one? How do you lose face fat? So a common misconception that unfortunately still exists is that you can um, Target fat loss, you know. Uh, you see videos, mm, magazine yeah, yeah. articles saying, lose your fat belly, uh, lose uh, the fat, uh, whatever, on your glutes. Like the way you lose fat on your face is by losing fat all across the body, you know, like uh, that's the only way. You can't target like uh, losing fat face. So the only way is to lose fat across all your body. And the only way to do that is to be on a caloric deficit, you know, for a, a certain period of time, mm. depending on the person. Uh, so caloric deficit, um, obviously uh, cardio. My clients, 
uh, I don't do them, don't put them doing a lot of cardio, uh, like treadmill or whatever. Like I think it's more sustainable to implement number of steps, number of daily steps. So I have my clients because it's mostly people, you know, that have run their businesses or whatever. Like I have them, for example, they're having a call. I tell them instead of standing down, uh, walk in your room, you know, and have like your Apple watch or whatever, tracking the steps. Um, you know, instead of using Tinder, go on the street and like meet a girl on the street instead of meeting a girl in your instead phone. Instead of jerking off for five minutes, jerk off for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, increasing the step count plays a drastic, drastic difference when it comes to fat loss. What do you think is the importance of cardio besides? So I know obviously cardio, you burn, uh, you burn more calories. But yeah. Let's say you're like, let's say your maintenance, whatever calorie level is 1800. Yeah. And let's say you're doing 1400 calories. Would cardio really add anything at that point? Cardio helps a lot with your health. That that's like over, overall, like you mean, like your yeah. I guess okay. I see what you mean. You know what I mean. Like if you want to be in bed and have more st stamina with your girlfriend or something, yeah. cardio is going to help with that. If you want to, you know, be able to have more stamina, I don't know, playing football with your friends, cardio yeah, helps yeah, with yeah. that. But when it comes to losing fat, cardio is not essential. Like because I, I do close to zero cardio, but I do know so I'm like doing squats and like I'm out of breath a lot. Yeah. And like I do know that if I did cardio, I could counteract that. It helps. Like I get out of breath, and sometimes I have to stop. Like you take longer breaks just because I'm like 100. percent Especially if you do like higher reps, if you do like I don't know 10, 12 reps, 15 yeah, for squat, yeah, yeah. it helps 100. Yeah, percent Okay, okay. 100. percent Your body becomes more efficient, you know, at processing, you know, the oxygen into the blood and whatever, like like all of these processes. The more cardio you do, your body becomes more efficient uh, in doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What's the next one? Thank you. Is Adolfo your real name? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. Needs are better advice on body fat. Been working out and pretty jacked. Uh, jerk just got fat uh, ruining my cups. What's the question? Needs some better advice on burning fat. Been working out and pretty jacked. Just got fat ruining my cuts. I mean, again, yeah, I think it just comes down to calorie deficit. Yeah. I mean, people overcomplicate yeah. a lot of this stuff. Like for face fat, belly fat, it's all the same. It's all calorie deficit. Uh, burn calories through whatever means necessary. Either, Either eat steps. less or burn more. Yeah. Or a combination That's of both. It. That's yeah. It. Or just be an ectomorph like me and you'll never yeah. be fat. Or like me. Yeah. body naturally burns like 10,000 calories a minute. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, the one the other topic I really want to cover is the uh, your uh, beard. So I'll uh, talk about that. Yeah, so um, beard transformation gains. Around two years ago, that's when I decided that I'm, I'm I'm like done with having a patchy beard. Like I want to to improve yeah, this. You show me a picture. You have a super patchy beard. Yeah. A lot of guys always ask this. Oh, dude, I wish I could have a beard. My beard is patchy. Yeah, so I started doing a lot of research, and I came across two main things that helped like growing your beard, which were minoxidil which is something that yeah, you apply getting, on your yeah. beard, like a liquid that you apply on your beard every morning and night. And uh, microneedling, which is this tiny, this device that has like some tiny needles, like tiny as much as half a millimeter. And you apply it on your patchy areas and that stimulates the production of collagen uh, to, to, you know, heal the areas. And your body brings collagen to the areas and the collagen helps with the, bird, uh, the, the beard uh, production. So my plan was to do this for one year, maximize my beard as much as possible. And then once that was done, uh, three weeks ago, I did the beard transplant after, you know, I grew my beard. It was only three weeks ago that you did it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. So that's why I still have the patches because it's still not... It looks pretty good. It, it, right now, it doesn't look like... I think it doesn't look that good, but in like three months from now, I have the roots and the roots are going to grow into, into the same beard as you know the rest so it's all gonna look even. i didn't even know you could do a beard transplant yeah they, they take the... some hair so like the back of your head and they put it on the, the i don't think i have enough hair in the back of my head <laughs> i think it's it uh how much of it how much do you think the minodoxyl and the um the uh, derma rolling how much do you think that helped it's helped a little bit like if you had to put a percentage on it like 20 50 not 50 like 20 i'd say 20 percent. yeah i mean i wanted to maximize my natural beard but dude the before picture when you show me the before picture of a beard it's it's drastic there's a yeah. big difference in what you have so the other 80 percent was just the three weeks of the transplant 
three weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. It like was that. like 1.8 thousand uh, hairs. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say one point eight thousand dollars. No, I did one point eight thousand hairs. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Damn. So you notice, like, when I did the beer transplant, you notice a difference, like, within a few days, right? It was just like, yeah, yeah, but it, it's like it's it's just the roots yet for now. But, but the- still, a hundred times better than what the picture you showed. Yeah, me. yeah, definitely. We'll we'll put that in the description, guys. We're gonna we're gonna. I need to dig that picture up, but uh, we'll throw it in there. Yeah, that, that's, that's fucking drastic, man. Yeah. Where did you do that? Why? No, where, where? Actually, oh, in why? Istanbul. In okay. Istanbul. I was in Belgrade, Serbia, and before I came to Miami, and uh, I was like, oh, before I go to Miami, I'm going to take care of this. Why you want a better beard? <laughs> Don't understand this. What, uh, what other uh, looks maxing things have you done? Besides, you, you did fitness, you did the, the beard? The beard. Um, I've been getting more into, like, uh, um, uh, uh, how do you call it? like face cleaning? Uh, uh, like skincare. Or skincare. Whatever? Skincare. Yeah. I've been getting more into skincare. Um, what else? What do you do for skincare? Just basics. Just like uh, I have like um, this thing that I wash on the shower, like this uh, this product I wash in the shower. Then after that, I moisturize, and then I moisturize before going to bed. Not a big deal. I started recently also. Um, is is your hair all natural? Yeah. Do you do Rogaine for your hair or not? No. Just natural? Oh, damn. You just got like a really solid hairline. Yeah, I had luck with my hair for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. The luck I didn't have with the beard that I had with the hair. Yeah. Anything else that you've done? Well, like, looks, I mean, I'm trying to think what else a guy can do. You can yeah. Do, like, uh, those are the main ones. Those are like the soft ones. There's like the hard looks maxing, which you can do like operations yeah. and shit. Obviously, for guys watching, you know, clothes, like maximize your looks with yeah, clothes, yeah. Uh, you know, ac- accessories. Yeah, very simple things. Yeah, yeah my girlfriend. I showed my girlfriend uh, your TikTok, and she was like, "Oh, damn, that guy's good looking." Yeah, yeah. I was like, thank you're you. not allowed to meet him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and for older guys, older like I don't know, forty or something, Botox. I think it's also an option when you turn forty, fifty, whatever, and you start having like more wrinkles. Mm. I think Botox is becoming very popular with guys, not only with girls. Yeah, I know John did it. Yeah, uh, yeah. John does several times. I know for myself, I'm planning on doing. Um, exosomes in the scalp so it's gonna be my step if that doesn't work i'm gonna do a hair transplant yeah. but um the transformations i've seen with the exosomes in the hair if you do three injections it's insane like almost as good as a hair transplant some people say it's even better so nice. i'm gonna document the whole thing but you guys are gonna see in three months i'm gonna have more hair since a lot of you guys in the comments like to remind me that i'm losing hair i did not know that random youtube guy but thank you for telling me <laughs> i was under the impression i had a full hairline and another one i've seen is actually tattooing a hairline i don't know if yeah seen that i've seen that i it, Okay, so with that, I actually know people have it. If it's done right, it can look okay. Yeah. If it's done wrong, it looks like total shit. Mm-hmm. FusiTube, you know who FusiTube is? He was a really popular YouTuber mm-hmm. who completely lost his mind. He did that, and he had to have it removed because it just looked horrible. Fuck. So imagine having to remove that. But also, it always looks like you have a very short hair. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It's, I think like it's if you do it right, it's okay. It might be a little bit better than nothing. But at that point, I think I'd rather just go with a bald look. Yeah, yeah. Tattoos also, you know, for a first yeah, you have yeah, I have one. I want to make more. This is this is my first one. I made it like two months ago or something. Mm. Uh, tattoos, you know, are nice. Yeah. And you also have one many one. I have uh, three. I three. Got, okay. Yeah, I got a few. Yeah. Uh, what other questions we got? Differences between dirty bug, classic bug, and lean bug in terms of. I thought he was gonna say dirty bugs. bots. <laughs> The difference between dirty butt and a clean butt. <laughs> yeah. Um, so dirty bulk, I, I'd say it's more for people who don't have, you know, patience to count their, all the calories and they just eat as much as they can. Can, can we just quickly explain what a dirty bulk is? On a clean yeah. Bulk? Dirty bulk is like when you, so if you want to gain muscle, you, you need to be eating above what you burn, right? So dirty bulking is eating above what you burn without counting just eating whatever comes to your plate. Uh, you go to McDonald's, you go to KFC, you eat uh, one gallon of milk per day, whatever. You just eat as much as you can. And mm. that's called dirty, bul- bu- dirty bulking. Lean bulking is knowing exactly... So, okay, I'm going to explain this first. Lean bulking is knowing exactly 
how much you need to eat uh, this week, how much protein, how much carbs, how much fat, and you eat that amount every day. Then next week, uh, based on your evolution of your physique during that week, you, up, you uh, upgrade the calories and macros, and you do that every week, you upgrade it every week to make sure that you're gaining the optimal amount of muscle with the minimum amount of fat gains as possible. For some reason, I thought dirty bulking was when you bulk, but you're eating, like, you'll eat anything. You'll eat, like, shitty food, like fast food. Whereas clean bulking was doing the same thing, but eating healthy foods. No, not only. Not only. It's what you said, but with the addition of knowing how many calories and macros for the clean. Okay. Yeah. Um, Knowing how how many, and then every week calibrating, uh, adjusting more or less according to your progress. So, okay, so to answer the question, which one, uh, what did the guy say? Like, which one is better? Or was no, it? No, he just asked what's the difference oh, between okay. the type of food and quantity. What, what would you recommend for a guy who's trying to uh, put on mass? I mean, if, if you don't care about gaining fat, if you just want to get big, dirty for sure. But, you know, if you want to gain just muscle without the fat gains, uh, clean bulky for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Next. How tall is Adolfo? I'm 179. I think that in feet is like Slightly five over six feet. No, no, it's like 5'11. Oh, five, is it? Five, five, oh, five, yeah, ten. I'm thinking 183. Yeah, 5'11. Five, oh, five, five, yeah, yeah, 5'11. Do you feel like having more muscle makes you look taller? No, maybe you don't no. think so. I've, I've, always, I've always found actually, in my opinion, that like when a guy has a lot of muscle because he's bigger, it just gives the impression that he's a little taller. No, not not, si- not significant. I, I say it's the opposite. Yeah, I don't know. I've always thought it was like when, when a guy has like mass, it just looks like he's like a little bit bigger overall, mm. and that people just think he's bigger and like thus taller. Not like significantly, but like an inch or two. Could okay. be my perception. Maybe. What's the uh, next? What do you think about the Mediterranean diet, bro? I think it's like in t- in the balance between tastiness and healthiness. I think it's the best in the world. Mm. Because I know I would probably agree with that. Yeah, it's because it tastes so good, and obviously it's not the healthiest thing you can eat, but it's like it's fairly healthy. You know, it's, it's right up there. I mean, what would you say is unhealthy about it? Uh, again, it can have too much fat because of all the uh, olive oil and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it's it's fairly healthy. You know, like kids growing up in the Mediterranean, like it's 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 good we're good we would like we have good food when we grow up and uh, that plays a role you don't see ma- much obesity in you know italy portugal spain whatever in mm-hmm. compared to the united states for example mm-hmm. and i think that that's one big reason for sure mm-hmm. keep going what are your thoughts on using creatine i think 90 percent of people that go to the gym uh, can use creatine for who, sure who are the other 10 there's the possibility that, uh, and this is not yet proven scientifically, but there's a possibility that people who have like a predisposition to lose hair, creatine really? can speed it up. Can speed it up, really? yeah. Only if you have predisposition. Like if you, for example, for me, I don't think I do, so it doesn't doesn't make me lose hair. But there's a possibility for people that uh, with male pattern baldness. You've seen, you've seen studies on this. Again. It's just, a, um, I don't know how to say this in English, uh, connota- um, anecdotal. Anecdotal. Because that sounds like some pro science to me. Like, oh, I eat some creatine one and I lost my hair. Yeah, it's, it's just anecdotal. Like, and my wife let me. Based on like bros talking at the gym. <laughs> oh, this happened to me, this happened to me. And then it started navigating right. the, the internet. But there's still not scientific studies that prove it. So, mm. Yeah, I'll be curious to see how that will work. Because like the only way that could make you lose hair is if it like builds uh, what's called DHT, right? Mm-hmm. That's the hormone that makes you lose hair. Yeah. Which I, I don't know how that would work, but again, I'm not yeah. a pharmacologist. Uh, what do you think about low dose uh, Cialis? I've never tried, but I've heard good things about it. That's the next thing I want to try. Yeah, it might be might be good. Yeah, I, I personally never tried it. It might be good. Yeah. Next. What's your guys' opinion on saunas using traditional dry saunas change my life and physique? I'll let you go first. Yeah, I think it's amazing for your immune system. For recovery, I was doing this a lot in Bali. Because when I lived in Bali, my gym had like a cold plunge, sauna, uh, and jacuzzi. And after my workouts, I would do like a cold, uh, hot for like 
10 minutes, then cold for like oh, one yeah, minute. It was popular in Russia. Yeah, in Bali it was, it was amazing. And um, I, w- I would do this like three times. Bro, you know, like when you train legs and you're sore for like three yeah. days. When I did this, like the soreness was like 80% less or something really? like that. It helps so much with recovery. It's crazy. I'm a big fan of sauna, but I don't know if I've ever... I don't use it personally for like gym. I use it just in general, overall health. Yeah. Uh, I just ordered an infrared sauna. It's coming on Thursday. It's like fucking spent $4,000 on like a super fancy, high powered, um, far, in, far in mid spectrum infrared sauna. But uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of that stuff for sure. Uh, you ever try cryotherapy? No, you did? Yeah, I've tried it many times. It's mm-hmm. interesting. It definitely helps with recovery a little bit. Plus, you feel like a little more energetic. I used to have like a monthly membership to like a cryotherapy place. So I used to just do it like after every workout. It's pretty cool. You feel like more like energetic afterwards for sure. And I think it does help with recovery. Like you just get basically just go under negative 300 degrees for like three minutes. Fuck. It's fun. <laughs> what about your like your genitals in, in minus 300? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you wear a towel. But, uh-huh. uh, so the, the steam doesn't directly hit your dick. But yeah, I don't know. You, nothing's Far. ever fallen off. Yeah, but I want to try it 100%. I, I've heard good things. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, what else you got? How to not quit workouts after some time? Do you have any tips for that? <laughs> Don't quit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess it's a question of motivation. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't don't uh, either don't know how to reach, you know, results, or they don't stick for enough an enough uh, good period of time. And I think there's like uh, three points. It's like a, a, a circle. It's like you start doing the thing. And then you get results and then you get like the feedback. And then when you start getting results and the feedback, it motivates you to, mm-hmm. to keep going. So more, more people, a lot of people are, are like start, but they don't get to the part where they have the, the results and then the feedback of other people. And, uh, and that's a big motivator for, for a lot of people. Like when, if someone else tells you, oh, you're getting big or like, uh, you know, a bro or a girl that you're dating, like, oh, you're getting, you're getting uh, your six pack is starting to show up. Like these kind of things really motivate you and, uh, and you want to keep going. But for that to happen, you need to, you know, stick to it for enough period of time to, to see a change. Yeah. I think the problem is the reason people give up is they don't see results. You see this with pickup yeah. all the time. Like they just go out for a few months and not seeing any results and then they give up. Same thing could be with the gym. Like you go out, you mean you go to the gym for like, you know, a month or so and two months and then you don't see any results and you yeah. just get tired of it. I think part of the issue is just doing the wrong part of the issues have unrealistic expectations mm-hmm. because like, you know, they see like Instagram models and shit who are taking massive amounts of roids and they're like, Oh shit, I don't look like that. So if you go to the gym, I think what's like a, like, let's say your first three months in the gym, what's a realistic expectation? First three months. Um, in terms of what, uh, what, what expectation? Are you uh, fitness, about? physique, like how you look, aesthetics. Yeah, depends on when you start. You know, you can start obese, you can start skinny. Uh, Let's say it, you're a skinny guy. Let's say you're just like skinny as fuck. Yeah. Um, if you're skinny after three, like after the second month, you can be gaining like two pounds of muscle per per month. If you're weighting yourself, like like your six pack should be like you still you shouldn't be gaining fat, but the scale should be going up. Uh, at least two pounds per month after like the, the second month for like for like half, half a year or a year. Okay, so in three months you can expect to gain like what five six pounds of muscle, possibly if you're doing everything correct. If you're doing everything correctly. Yeah. What about in the first half a year? Ten pounds. Yeah, like six times two, twelve pounds. Yeah. Okay. What about in the first year? Then it starts decreasing after like the six months of like no big gains. Maybe one and a half pound per month after, you know, seventh month, eighth. Uh, then after one year, maybe you gain one pound per month. And this is if you're optimizing everything. Like yeah, we're macros. assuming everything is optimal. Yeah. So the first year you're saying gain like what, like 12 pounds of muscle or how many? 12 for the first six months, it's possible. Okay, what about for the first year? For the first year, maybe 18, 20. It's pretty good. If you're doing everything you're right. Everything, correctly. Yeah. yeah, 18 pounds is pretty good. And you, and you mentioned the skinny guy, which yeah. for me, it's the easiest way to start. But if you're fat, you have to lose the fat and then gain the muscle, which is much harder. But if you start skinny, yeah, it's just... I mean, 18 pounds, though, like that will make you look noticeably different. Yeah, or after one year, 
you like can 18 pounds of muscle you will look noticeably better if yeah what about two years in what's what can, what can you expect how many pounds 25 30 that you're gonna look significantly better yeah. what about three years after two years it just starts decreasing like way more way more like after three years like if you've been doing everything correctly for the first two years yeah then it's like i don't know 35 pounds. Nah, you're going to look really fucking good. Okay, so what about, let's take a fat guy or a chubby guy. Yeah, that's more. Comp- that takes more time. So what, what really? I would yeah. think it would almost be easier, right? Because you just take that fat and turn it into a muscle, no? No, because it doesn't turn into muscle. You know, like it's two completely separate uh, processes. Uh, you can still have amazing results. Like you can go, uh, you know, in like... 20 weeks, you can go from being chubby to like having a six pack, which is still amazing. 20 weeks, so that's like what, five months? Yeah, in five to seven months, you can go from being chubby to like, com- like completely different. I sent some pictures. I don't know if he can yeah, we'll, share. We'll, we'll throw them up. Uh, there's guys that I've coached that were like fat and they were having a six pack in like 20 weeks, 25 weeks. Actually, let's throw it up now because it's kind of related. Yeah, yeah. Throw, throw those up. Uh, so can. it's it's different because they are not gaining like a massive amount of muscle like they would be if they were skinny, but they are still like losing fat and gaining some muscle at the same time, and they end up looking amazing still. Um, so uh, so yeah yeah. Mm. Let's see. Okay, okay. Let me know when you have the pictures up. I want, I want to go through that. And I was going to say something. Oh, and in talking about the motivation we were talking about, a big one that, uh, especially for guys, you know, you're looking on YouTube, how to socialize or, or everything, a big one is finding a workout partner at the gym. Really? Okay. Like, if you have the guts to approach a girl in the street or whatever, why approach the guy? Yo, bro. It wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> I've, been, I've been looking at you from before, and I say your bench form is impeccable. Now, uh, I'm going be so bold as to suggest if I can get your number. <laughs> 100%. Like, why not approach guys uh, at the gym? <laughs> like, um, you know, like. Yo, bro, I saw you in the shower, and uh, I like what I saw. <laughs> and you want to be my partner? And get a workout partner. Well, uh, what do you feel is the benefit of that? I've always preferred work, work, working out alone. Really motivation like let's say you're doing bench press like uh and you you want to go to failure like you can either be asking someone like oh can you spot me can you spot me uh, otherwise you can't go to failure you can't go to failure right, 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 right. Yeah. If you, but if you, if well, you well, have someone if you're there, doing the barbell though, you can I, i've always actually preferred doing dumbbells personally. yeah both are important but uh but yeah bro like having someone who can like be there like to push you for the last reps um like th- that's a big one. When you get like to eight, nine, ten rep, and you're almost going to failure. When you're alone, you have no chance. Like it doesn't go up. No, I get, I get that. So, I so s- you stop. But you, if you have someone helping you, that extra bit uh, of pushing that you do, that translates into like eighty percent of the gains or or really eighty percent of the gains. Of the gains? Ima- imagine that you do twelve reps, uh, and you go to failure on the twelfth. Uh, the last four reps translate into like. 80% of the gains. Is, is there any like studies on that? Yeah. yeah really? Yeah. Okay. I want to see that. Yeah. Okay. Well, why not just do at that point? Like if you don't have a partner, just do uh, dumbbells. Like what would be the big benefit of doing barbell at that point? Even dumbbells, like the last ones, the last, I, I, like let's say you, you reach number nine and you can't do any more. Mm. Uh, if, if you have someone helping you, they could help you to do three more and those three more, you're, you're, like it's it's really good for your hypertrophy. Premium. What do you think about reverse pyramid training? Uh, what do you mean? Rever- like when you okay, so let's say I'm tr- I'm trying chest uh, train chest right, and let's say like you know I can bench press whatever two hundred pound dumbbells. So I do as much as I can with the hundreds, right? I do my three sets and then I drop down to the eighties, and then I go to fatigue, and then I drop down to sixties, I drop down to forties. Right? You mean uh, without rest? Or no, with rest, but you're you're just dropping, dropping. It's, I'm not talking about supersetting. I'm talking about reverse, like what Arnold talks about, oh. where, you're, where you're dropping. So this way, because you know when you're when you've done a bunch, you know, let's say you did a you know set with the hundreds, uh, three sets with the hundreds, then you did a set with the eighties, set with the sixties, and then you're doing the set with the forty. That set with the forty is gonna be just as hard as the set with the hundred, yeah, because your muscles are so fatigued. But you can't do the hundreds anymore, right? So then you're dropping and dropping and dropping. This yeah, way yeah. you can just squeeze out every little strength of that muscle that has left. Yeah, that is a very good method. Yeah, I like that. Um, if you want to bring up the intensity and stuff like that, but that is a method to be used in the later parts of the workout. In the in the first part of the workout, 
there is one method that like no other method comes close, which, was that? which is progressive overload, uh, which is doing standard three or four sets uh, with a barbell. And this is why barbell is so important. Um, with a barbell, and every week you do this pro and you do a program of progressive overload for let's say two months or three months or whatever. And every week your strength it must go up. So let's say that you're doing 200 pounds for bench press mm. and this week you do eight reps, mm. three sets. Next week you have to be able to do 205 pounds. Or, right, no, I, I, just, I get that. You know what I mean? Every week you sh it should go up. That's the only way that you're going to, if this happens and you do proper form, obviously, your muscle is 100% going to grow. There's, no, right, right, there's no sure. way. Right. You can be doing like the reverse pyramid and everything, and there's a chance you're not going to grow. But those, okay, so I think the clarification needs to be made is those two are not exclusive. So you would do the progressive overload, yeah. but then once, okay, so let's say I'm doing 200 to give that example. I'm doing mm -hmm. 200s, I do whatever, three sets with that, mm -hmm. right? Next week, I'm going to be doing 205, whatever. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to have an easier time to get into that 200, in theory, obviously, uh, to get into that 205, maybe 210 next week. If after I'm done with my three sets of 200, I drop down and do a set with the 80s, and that's going to really punish my muscle so that next week I can go maybe even 210, right? Do you understand? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. It's just more complicated to gouge like uh, over like something simple like three sets. Right, right, right. Yeah, it has complexity for sure. Yeah. And the reason I mentioned barbells over dumbbells is because barbells, it's easier to have like one pound on each side or whatever. And, and dumbbells, they like you, right, you yeah, jump for like yeah, 35 yeah. to 40, whatever. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. You, you got to get like the micro weights. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's why barbells for progressive overall. That's why like the workout plans I create usually I always have a barbell exercise at the beginning. And then for, for the rest of the workout, it's just machines dumbbells, uh, Smith machine. I love the sweet Smith machine. By so, the way. so you don't believe that uh, free weights are better than uh, machines? or what, what is uh, Only for this particular reason of the progressive overload. Um, it's, it's better. And because it also works on your stabilizer muscles more. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of people, these old school bodybuilding people, they over exaggerate how Free weights are better. I think free machines are like I think machines are like very good as well. Especially the Smith machine. It's such an amazing piece of equipment. Why is that? You just it's so easy to feel your muscle. Like if you're doing I don't know overhead press, if you're doing your uh, training your chest, if you're doing squats with the Smith machine, it's just that movement. You ha you still have the barrel, but it's like stabilized. You feel the muscle so well in the Smith machine. Like from my experience, for my colleagues' experience, for my clients, Smith machine is an amazing, amazing piece yeah. of equipment. Even better than like most machines, if not all. I think the Smith machine is the better. Yeah, yeah it's so like flexible. You can use a bench. You can be standing. Yeah, it's it's probably my favorite piece of equipment at the gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, did we get those pictures up? Yeah. Yeah. Some some good shit in there, guys. Uh, all right, let's jump to the next question. Hmm. L? What does that even mean? Um, For love? Yeah. <laughs> say I love you back. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'll just say that. Yeah. Uh, write a full comment, man. I'm curious what, what he's trying to say. Uh, yeah, there's like an infamous article that was written uh, by, uh, uh, I think it was Men Men's Health Magazine a few years ago, and I did like a TikTok video about it that had like millions of views. Officer, I wasn't publicly masturbating. I was trying to boost my testosterone. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, it says that it says that exposing your balls to the to the sun uh, can boost your testosterone if you do it every day for like, I mean, like how do you even do that? Like, I mean, I, I guess it's probably easier for you like live in a rural area, but other than like Miami, I just like would go on my balcony, I guess, and show my balls. Yeah, like um, in Europe is different. In Europe, like your balconies are kind of more like secluded. It's not like. These, these tall buildings is like you live like on a smaller house or something. Europe is better for showing your balls. Too, yeah, so. pretty much. Maybe men have more testosterone there <laughs> because of that. 
uh i don't know but uh but yeah like um i don't personally do it i just wanted to share the, the damn ar infamous article with tiktok and it got like millions of views was it a legit study uh like placebo control and everything it, it was like the some of these studies are so so such bullshit yeah like it needs more uh in-depth uh more numbers of people being studied it was definitely not enough there, there was definitely not enough people being studied <laughs> but, took some like public masturbator and like but what is testosterone <laughs> levels <laughs> but the point is the main point of the this article that people didn't get people were just like making the jokes and everything but the main point is like you need vitamin D to to have a high. Oh yeah, most uh, people don't, don't get enough sun. Okay, okay, that's pretty much it. So maybe it's not the showing your balls to the, but just like being in the sun. In being general. in the sun in general and yeah. showing, but uh, not only that, not only being in the sun, but having you know most of your body in the sun because a lot of people, oh yeah, I mean with my shirt and my shorts, it's enough to get sun like this. No, the point of the whole shine your your balls, uh, show your balls to the sun thing. Is to be naked in the sun. It's it's to not have your your shorts and your shirt when you're in the sun. It's not enough. Uh, you can also just take vitamin D. Like I think everyone should you take can. vitamin D. You can. You can. It's you can. super cheap, super easy. Yeah. Like I take ten thousand. I use a day. Like it, really here in Miami. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No yeah. Okay. No uh, I think everyone could benefit because just it's just like I'm not outside. Like yeah, I am outside. Like it's Miami, but I'm not like spending hours a day in yeah. the sun. Uh, I mean, there's no like it's so hard to overdose on vitamin B. No, it's yeah. like so fucking hard. It just hard. Go, flushes out. Yeah, yeah. Eh, it is fat soluble, but I mean, I do blood work and I'm always like trying to be in the upper range of that. Yeah. I think everyone could benefit, like even like 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. I use like you take yeah. a lot of it. If you're in a sunny place, 10,000 is enough. Yeah, here in Miami, it's enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the best way to find out is just do blood work. But if you're in fucking Sweden during the winter, 25. it also depends on what your complexion is. If you're like darker or you're black, you need more vitamin D yeah. than a white person. Like I need way less than like you know, uh, you know, my roommate, right? Who's yeah. Indian? Like just because different skin color. What's next? Alex, why do why do you be why do you seem to be against Propecia for hair loss? I've been on it about seven years and my hair looks basically the same as it did when I started. Um, it really stops the loss. Yeah, I'm not against it at all. Uh, I just personally don't take it. There's a difference. I have no problem with it at all. Uh, I just personally don't take it because I already have health issues and there's a potential I know with uh, finasteride. Again, it doesn't happen for everybody. I know plenty of people who are on it who have good results for it to uh, mess with like, you know, your um, derivative of testosterone, I forget the name. And for sometimes it takes like a while to recover one, even once you get off it. So there are side effects that happen to some people. And just with all the health issues I have, I just choose not to uh, add on to it. But if I was healthy, I would definitely try it for sure. Or do you, I mean, you, you don't have hair loss, so you wouldn't really yeah. take from that, right? Yeah. Just take it for fun anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in it for the health, <laughs> in it for the uh, side effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've heard people that like had a bad time, you know. Yeah, in yeah. I think I think it just it's just very hit or miss. I just didn't want to take that risk. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I'm not against it at all. Like I have no problem with it. Yeah. I, there's very few things that I'm against, honestly. Uh, but finasteride is certainly not one of them. Mm. Uh, what's the next one? Does eating cinnamon increase testosterone levels? Uh, this funny question. I had a, one of my really good buddies growing up, uh, actually a natural friend I talked about, he used to eat cinnamon with every meal because he believed it, uh, it sped up your absorption of the food or something. What are your thoughts on that? So cinnamon, there is a scientific study done in rats that, that like the testosterone was indeed boosted in rats. Um, it was never done in humans, but... I, I I still take it every day. I still take cinnamon every day. It tastes good. Um, I don't think it can hurt in any way. It can't hurt for 100%. And uh, yeah, if there's a chance that it can boost testosterone, like I take it and it tastes good, why not? I it's think other things, vitamin D, zinc, that's a big one. Zinc is such a big one. Yeah, vitamin D, zinc. Uh, I think the, I think also you should just take the B vitamins, the B vitamin group, uh, C. Uh, what else is there? Uh, C, zinc, C, uh, D. Um, yeah, I mean, those are... Like, magnesium also. Magnesium, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, this is just things that it's very common to be... Like, guys are very common, commonly deficient in these, you know, in zinc, in magnesium. It's not like you take it and it boosts the testosterone automatically. It's just simple, you know, diets nowadays have low zinc, have low magnesium, and... Um, 
And that's why these, you know, when you fix this micro... So the fastest way to boost testosterone in guys is to fix vitamin deficiency, micronutrient deficiency. Yeah, yeah. I think everyone should do the SpectraCell uh, micronutrient panel. Yeah. It's only like $300 to test you for every possible vitamin, micronutrient. Have you ever heard of that one? I did. I did, I did yeah. Okay. Yeah. What were you deficient in? I did hurt. I did hurt. That's what I'm telling you. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, you heard about it. Yeah. yeah. I was deficient in uh, B5, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I started supplementing like heavy doses of that. Like, yeah, shit, f- shit that you would never think of. Like, yeah. like uh, you, who the fuck thinks of B5? You've heard of B6, B12, but like, no one ever exactly. heard of B5. And the thing is, like, a lot of people, they have like low energy, they feel bad, they don't have a boner in bed. And they're like, <laughs> I'm going to go keto, it's going to fix all my problems. I'm going to go vegan. And like, if they only did a test and they would find the macronutrient deficiencies and they fix them, that's like, that would fix all of their problems. You probably, like, you fixed your deficiencies and you felt much better after, I, I bet. For me, it's different just again, because of all the other health issues, but definitely yeah. like, you know, fix it. It's definitely good to be aware of like yeah. all this shit. Like, I'm a big fan of like testing rather than like having to do guesswork and just like yeah. figure it out. Like, this shit's not that expensive, $300. Obviously, like all the good tests are never going to be covered by insurance. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, something like, oh, can I go through my insurance? The answer is no. Nothing good is ever covered by insurance, but like all these tests are not super expensive. And I think they're only getting cheaper because now more and more people are like interested in doing stuff like that. Yeah. You can also do, do you ever do 23andMe and do the genome no. mapping? That stuff is also super interesting. You can see all like the, uh, like the gene, whatever things you're prone to, not prone to. For example, I found out that I have all the genes prone for heroin addiction. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I have pretty much every gene that makes me poor at processing caffeine, which always explains why I've had problems with coffee. I get like stomach aches when I drink coffee. Okay. So I have like literally every gene that makes me bad at processing caffeine, which is funny. So you don't take caffeine, no? No, I still like coffee, but I have a little more moderation. Yeah. I take it easy with it. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a few other ones, big ones, but like you also, you can see cancer risk, like stuff like that. You can, I have to do that, man. Nice. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's not that expensive. It's like, uh, it used to, when I first did it, it was super cheap because it was like, it was $99 at the time because it just really? recently came out. Now it's closer to like 300 and then you pay an extra $80 for like, uh, like there was this website, like nutrient hacker or whatever, where they, they, they help you interpret because you just get the raw data, but you need to interpret the data. Uh, there's also Ancestry Me. There's all these competing websites. But yeah, everyone should do the micronutrient test and the uh, the gene testing. And then that gives you a lot of really good information Bro, that you can use to optimize. 380 bucks is nothing for someone like that can change your life, like your health. Like it's, I think it's a no-brainer. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're gonna waste like if you get sick and shit, you're gonna waste way more money on treatment than you would on prevention. Yeah, so for sure. Um, okay, what's the next question? Just went on a tangent. <laughs> How to approach girls at the gym? Oh, I wanted to cover that, but okay, let's uh, jump right into it. Mm. We actually, funny enough, we actually shot a TikTok on this. It's gonna be on his TikTok page in uh, a few weeks. Yeah, uh, yeah, man. I, it's it's funny because um, it's not a coincidence. Like for me, like always, the best uh, the girls I always relate the most. Uh, that's the place. You know, I meet. I meet. Really? Them, how, how many girls would you say you met at the gym, like successfully, like where you hooked up with them after? Or something? I don't know, like how much, but yeah, like a couple of months ago, uh, I met this girl in Belgrade uh, at the gym, and like we were like pretty close. We almost got to, like to being like boyfriend and girlfriend, or whatever. But I had to travel, like nothing. Like we st- were still in touch, um, but. It's just like anything. Like if you like poker, you're probably gonna meet uh, a girl that you like in a, in a, in a poker table. Or well, probably a, not, because like 99 percent dudes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it's just a silly example. Yeah. But if you like but something, yeah, if you like books, a yeah. library. So for me, I'm into fitness. Like yeah, like uh, it's common for me to meet girls that I like, you know, at the gym. And um, the way I meet them is it's I don't know the, the way you would meet them. Anywhere else. Well, I kind of expand on that. Like, how did you meet that girl in Belgrade? Uh, yeah, just saw her uh, at the gym. Like, she was super like my type. She looked like r- really good. Um, I was filming videos with like a female friend of mine, um, but I saw her and I'm like, oh, I want, to, I want to meet her. So I just, you know, went up and said, I was training next to her. And that's a big one. Like, I don't just go across all the gym. To say hi like to to someone you saw across the gym like i was i was just doing my workout and then i happened to be next to her and i'm like oh hey and i started talking to her and um yeah we exchanged contacts that's pretty much it and then like we would see each other sometimes at the gym what was your opener 
Uh, it's situational. I, I honestly don't remember, bro. Yeah. I just said hi. It's probably situational. Right? Um, and uh, and yeah, what's here sometimes at the gym. I, I think I didn't even tell via text that much. Like I just one time I met her at the gym and I was like, oh, let's grab a drink. And yeah, I think a big thing that helped you is that you had a chick who was like videotaping you working out. So that, that like adds a lot. Like that just makes the girl. Yeah, a, a big one. Like I feel a lot of guys lack is like being social in general at the gym. Like if someone I don't know you want to meet the girl at the gym and you are like scanning for you know where are the hot girls at. Like, when I go to the gym, it's like I told you. Like, I talk to guys. I'm like, hey, do you want to work out sometime? Uh, I'm not there, like, to talk to the hot girls. Like, I just want to be social in general. Like, I want, I go to the gym. I train. But I, I don't want to be my rest times just, like, you know, like, being there in my corner. Like, like to have people to talk to. You and, know, I'm different uh, in that sense. I like to hide in the corner. And yeah. Just come out once in a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a little troll. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, just like to socialize in general at the gym, and I don't know if I if I meet a girl, it just comes naturally. Um, yeah, that's it. Are you naturally an extrovert? Uh, I'd say so. Yeah. Okay. I that's, think that, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I'd say the, the whole extrovert introverted thing. There's like a whole range. Maybe someone is like. Oh, definitely. A range. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. not like one hundred percent or nothing. One hundred percent. I'm not like a hundred percent extrovert. But I'd say I'm what seventy percent or something. Okay. I would say I'm like probably like thirty percent extrovert, like seventy percent introvert or something yeah. like that. There's definitely part of me that's extroverted, but largely I've been introverted. Uh, I think a lot of guys in the pickup community are largely introverted. Um, yeah. You can still be successful as an introvert, just going to affect the way you like. I think socialize. Um, let, let me let me run this by you because it's something. It's a little theory I've had yeah. on on the gym. Do you feel like uh, in the gym, there's almost like an unspoken hierarchy based on how fit you are? And if you're a guy who's like, like let's say, let's say you and I go to the gym and we have, let's say we have the same same. Okay, we look differently, so it's not gonna work. Let's say we're identical twins, right? And we have the same exact uh, looks besides from fitness, and we have the same exact game, but you're way more ripped than me. Do you feel like you'll have better odds? Just because, like, I know it's like that in real life, but I feel like in the gym it's more pronounced. Like, if you're, like, more ripped, like, you have a little bit of, like, almost like a hierarchy when it comes to gym culture. You know what I'm kind of getting at? Uh-huh. Uh, let me think. Like, I think it's, like, almost easier to do – it's easier everywhere when you're in good shape. I think yeah. it's significantly more easier in the gym when you're – the more ripped you are. Yeah. Um, I think there's, like, a peak – and then there's like diminishing, yeah, diminishing of course, of course, returns, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. the bigger you are after that. Yeah. Um, but up to a certain point, like I agree 100%. Uh, but then when you see those guys that are like bodybuilding competitors at the gym and stuff like that, that's like too unrelatable to. Yeah, I, th I think, yeah. But you don't get that look naturally. Like you have to take steroids to get that look. Uh, like you I've seen some pretty huge really? natural guys. Um, so they, where everything was aligned, like their genetics, their nutrition. Um, but yeah, for the most part, you need to take something. Like to get that freakishly like large look. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Ninety percent of people. Like, what, what do you think? Like, what percentage of your max natural potential would you say you're at right now? Like eighty. Okay, I would probably agree with that assessment. Yeah. So you got like, and how long do you think it's going to take you to get the other twenty percent? Like three, four years. Probably something like that. Yeah, it's funny. It's like the irony because you just keep getting diminishing returns. So you're going to be grinding out for three or four years to get that twenty percent. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm assuming at this point you really enjoy working out. Yeah. Right? Otherwise, you would have quit. But yeah, it's just like you get the diminishing returns. But yeah, like even when you get to hundred percent, like, uh, I, would you say you have, I think you probably have good genetics, right? Above average for sure. Yeah, for sure. Like, but you, you're not going to be like overly fucking ripped. Like, you're just going to be like in really good shape. Yeah. But you're not going to be like fucking huge. Yeah. But like, if you were to get on like like some roids right now, you would get fucking huge with your um, with your discipline and your workout program. So the thing with roids is that there are pe it's there it's like there's different type of uh, genetics. There is like how much you can achieve naturally genetics, mm. but there are people that naturally get to a really good level. And their genetics of reacting to roids are shit. You know what I mean? There's uh, different response levels. To exactly. Roids, yeah. And there's the there's also different kinds of roids. And there is the opposite. There is also people that naturally look very bad, but then they get on roids and they blow up. So it's very hard to look at so to look at me, look at someone, and just because they look good naturally, uh, it's hard to tell. Oh, this guy is going to look amazing as soon as uh, as they do roids. It's very hard because everyone, no matter if you if you look good or bad. 
everyone reacts very different to to steroids. Yeah, oh, for sure. And some people should definitely not be on steroids because yeah. of like uh, pre-existing health conditions. Yes. Like yes. it's it's really not for everyone. Like yeah. it's actually, I would say, probably for less than fifty percent of people, honestly. In terms of like me personally, I would never get on hard steroids. Like with just all the health issues I've had. Yeah. Uh, no fucking way. Yeah, but, especially not if you're below twenty five. Never. Uh, yeah, definitely not until you're done growing because it can infuse your uh, pl- whatever your growth plates. That would yeah. be not worth it. Yeah, when I see like the the sixteen year olds on TikTok or like on steroids, I'm just looking at them like shit. Yeah, like, sounds... like if I had a kid, I would never allow that. that would be, like, the one thing I'd be like, I'd be like, dude, go smoke some weed or something. Like, <laughs> I would encourage my kid to like do drugs instead of doing that because at least yeah. like that. Well, unless it's like super hard drugs, but like smoking weed and shit or mushrooms, at yeah. least that it's like a temporary thing. Versus like if you fuse your growth plates and do damage to your endocrine system at a young age, you're like kind of fucked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Unless you have like some massive deficiency and you're like whatever. Have it's like prescribed by a doctor. Um, right. How, I. I <laughs> I see some crazy because I'm in the whole like fitness thing online. I see like articles and everything. And I see, I saw this crazy, crazy conspiracy, conspiracy theory that uh, Donald Trump's son. Oh, is on HGH. Yeah. But yeah, like, it's... but not for muscle growth because he's like super so tall. tall. Yeah, yeah. And like people were telling, oh, he's like six, five or six, six, six. six. Does was Trump giving HGH to his son just so that he was taller. Yeah. Like, swear, uh, yeah. There's what? no fucking way. <laughs> he's just, a, he's just, his dad is six, two. And his mom's like five, 11. And like, if you look at his brothers, they're like six, four, six, five. Yeah. Ivanka's troll. They're a very tall family. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but people like to make all of these things, and like Ty Lopez, that, Ty yeah. Lopez also the other day admitted to be like on TRT. The Reddit fitness community was like booming, like oh, Ty Lopez was on roids all this time. But TRT, I mean, it's obviously similar, but it's not this. Like, I think a lot of people don't understand when you're doing testosterone for bodybuilding, you're doing like 500, 600, sometimes even a thousand milligrams a week. Yeah. When you're doing TRT, which is what I'm doing, you're doing like one hundred and fifty milligrams a week. Mm. You're doing like four to 10 times less of an amount, mm-hmm. right? So it's like the difference thing about between having one or two drinks at a bar and having ben. 10 drinks, right? Yep. It's the same substance, but you're going to feel completely differently. One or two drinks, you're going to be fine. You're going to be able to drive home. Like you might just be a little bit more social. 10 drinks, you're going to be fucked up. You're legally not allowed to drive. So there is a big difference there, I think, yeah. in terms of you know what you're doing, which I think a it, lot of people- It's called the super, feel- super, super physiological, physiological doses, levels of testosterone. Yeah, yeah. If you're like on 100, you're like it's natural levels of testosterone. You're just having them externally. Right. Yeah. Do you, what, what, how many calories do you do a day? Uh, right now, like 2.8 thousand I'm, I'm cutting. Okay. When I'm bulking, like 3.5 thousand. Okay. Do you, you like write out all your calories and stuff? Do you have like a MyFitnessPal or whatever? MyFitnessPal, yeah. Um, nowadays, this past week since I moved to Miami, I've been kind of hectic. So I've been doing like uh, intuitive eating sort of. Uh, but once I'm like, you know, settled in, I'll get back to my fitness. How many days a week do you work out? Five. Five. And then you take two days off? Not in a row, but, uh, I space them out. So I I train like three days then I rest one. Then I train two or three more. Do you do split workouts or full? Please, please. Okay, so like one day you'll dedicate to like chest, one day you'll dedicate to like back, right? No, I f- so for naturals, it's better to train uh, like a couple of muscles together to have like more repetition throughout the weeks. Otherwise, you train chest today and you're only training it again, you know, seven days from now. For naturals, that's not optimal. Um, so I do a split where I train like chest, shoulders, and triceps together, mm. then I back and biceps, legs, maybe I throw some shoulders. And then I take I I see my lacking muscle groups, which in my case are like the side delts and legs, and uh, I try to train them more often uh, throughout the week. Okay. Yeah. All right. What would you say my lacking muscle groups are? Uh, bro, it's me. like this with with clothes. It's hard to t- I'd have to take a look at like you, like in. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> We're saving that for after the podcast. <laughs> but. Um, I don't know, bro. I have. I, it's really hard to tell like this. I, I have to see like you. Let me, let me pull it. I'll show you on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Sh- show me. It's gonna be interesting. Let me have it. All right. Maybe so. maybe Nitin can also pull it up so that people can. Oh uh, yeah, Nitin, pull up my Instagram. Let's. Uh, I'll pull up uh, this one. I think this is a somewhat decent picture. It's not too long ago. You don't want to me your legs. I don't. <laughs> I don't have that many. Show. Yeah, I mean, my legs are nothing special, but. Yeah. In order to show legs, it would have to be like me, like 
in my underwear, which <laughs> so I, I can tell your strength is for sure traps. Like you pretty much don't. Yeah, but that, that a lot of that is testosterone. Yeah, yeah, testosterone yeah. response. So you do, you don't need to train traps at all. Yeah. Yours you also another strength is abs. You have very good abs yeah, insertions. Yeah. Uh you have good side belts uh mm-hmm. here, which is an it is a very important muscle part for guys. I'd say you need to grow your arms, bro. Yeah. I you need to throw in like an arm day during your week, like biceps and mm-hmm. triceps. And second priority is chest. Yeah, definitely. Chest. Always and I can't see the back from here. But I definitely need to grow back too. But probably third priority. But number one, I'd say arms. Arms, then chest, then, uh, mm. then back. And I don't know about the legs. <laughs> uh, the legs are nothing special. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason I do leg day once a month. <laughs> yeah, but you have a nice physique, bro. You have, uh, how old are you? Uh, 31. 31. You have a nice physique. Definitely like top. I don't know, 80 per, uh, 20%. <laughs> top 80%? <laughs> Big accomplishment. Yeah. I'm the top 80% of old grandmas. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, I've been, training, I've been training for like four or five years consistently. I'm very strict on my diet. Uh, I take my vitamins. I do TRT. So there's like a whole bunch of factors yeah. uh, that I've said. But I've been training very consistently for a while. Uh, just like my injuries limit me. If it wasn't for like my neck injury, I would be able to train a lot heavier. So I would make a lot faster gains. It's mm-hmm. a whole topic in of itself. All right, let's take some more questions. Yep. Yeah. Let's get a few more good ones in here. What else we got? What's your must-have supplement stack when working and cutting? I think we covered some of them, but is there any more you want to add? Yeah, big one is pre-workout. Um, I eat, for example, for someone like you with low caffeine tolerance, there is pre-workouts without caffeine, but that still have a lot of the good things that cause, you know, vasodilation, uh, like nitric oxide, l citrulline that's like two big compounds in the pre-workout. So uh, pre-workout for sure. Um Protein powder just makes your life easier, but it's not essential. Like if you can get your protein from food, from the food, the better. Have you ever heard of Perfect Amino? Perfect Amino. Yeah, I'll send you a link after. It's I made a video on it. It's a great supplement, but it has all the uh, eight essential amino acids. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's really good stuff, and there's some really good science on this that like we're all deficient in one amino acid or another, and then you take that before, like half an hour before you work out, and I think it's really good. I, t- I train on a fasted stomach with the perfect amino. And I find that when you're training fasted, if you haven't eaten that day, there might be like, you might be a little like Weak. amino acid deficient. But if you take the perfect amino, you counteract that. And nice. then you get the benefits of training fasted. Like what it I doesn't first, break the fast? No. Because nice. it doesn't have any calories. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. So I'm a big fan of that product. Yeah. So yeah, I'd say those like creatine and pre-workout are the big ones. Third one, protein powder, only if you need it. And that would be after the workout, right? Or before? Any or? part of the day. Okay. Uh, creatine after the workout, yeah. But well, cre- I thought creatine was before. No, no, no. Creatine is after. after. Okay, interesting. After. after. Um, and then there's a, like, it depends. Like, my, my clients, me, like, it's different supplements for every person. Like, someone might have, like, low testosterone, and I might uh, tell them to take uh, certain kind of supplements. Someone else might have like joint problems. I tell them to have different supplements. Someone else may have l- um, low energy, different. It's going to differ to every single mm. case. These three I just said, it's the only ones I recommend for everyone. And then it depends on Would everyone. you agree with me though that like supplements are like, unless it's like testosterone or something, is like only 10 or 20%, the 80% is training and diet? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think like people overblow how important the supplements are. Yeah, right? they're, they're like a small. They help in some way, especially if you're deficient. But they're like yeah. a small part. Of and the and if you maximize everything else, for sure, like uh, study your supplements, take them. But if you're eating fucking Pizza Hut or McDonald's every day, and you're thinking about supplements, like. Come on. What, what I actually read and what I used to do for a while is eating bananas after the workout because it's uh, it's carbohydrates, but it's natural carbohydrates and sugars, which apparently like just go like right into like feeding the muscles. What are your thoughts on amazing, that? Amazing, amazing fruit. A lot, a lot of people are a big fan of like bananas after lift, like right after lifting, yeah. you eat a banana. I amazing. used to carry like a banana with me to the gym. I don't know if like some people thought I was like gay or something. Like why is he fucking <laughs> no, having really? a banana at the gym? It's it's one of the best fruits to have after the workout. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, what else we got? Thoughts on using 
For guys? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you have a workout plan that is tailored uh, purely for losing fat, they have a place. Anything other than that, like if you want to gain muscle, like kettlebells should be at the bottom of your priority list, like be- below everything, below below dumbbells, barbells, machines, kettlebells should be like at the bottom. Um, yeah. But it also depends how you're using them. Like if you're using a you know heavy kettlebells for overhead press, it's like no different than a dumbbell at the end of the day. Uh, like the, it just like it depends on how like if you're using it like you can use it for shoulder stabilization when you're mm-hmm. holding it by the bar and that's like but that's different like that trains more of like your wrist and stabilization muscles but if you're holding it like right here like yeah. you know what the thing is it's just gonna yeah. be like pure, if you're like if you're training purely for looking good mm-hmm. I don't think it's best but if you want to train I don't know for fun- functionality mm-hmm. like CrossFit mm-hmm. whatever they have a place yeah they okay. have a place but if you're training for pure, aesthetics yeah. for aesthetics no kettlebells okay. uh, are not not needed. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, what's next? But yeah, for fat loss, kettlebells, hammer, uh, uh, rope. For fat loss, incredible. Mm. But yeah, if you want like look cool, lose fat, gain muscle, it's not the best. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What we'll be next? Okay, I've been training 10, 10 years as well. I pretty much hit my genetic limit. When does Adolfo plan on taking TRT if ever? Uh, I will take TRT when I feel, not when I hit my gen- genetic limit, but when I feel that my testosterone is uh, starting to affect, you know, other things on my life. Maybe I'm not having the same libido. Mm. Maybe I'm not having the same energy. Uh, I don't know when it will be, mid-30s, 40s, I don't know. We we talked about this online. You said your natural testosterone level was like eight hundred, right? Something like that. Yeah, which is pretty good. Like, I, there's no need for you to even yeah. be on testosterone. Mine was uh, under three hundred. It's oh. like a big difference. Yeah, so it's like I, I don't see any reason to get on TRT unless you're looking to get into like uh, what's it called, like professional bodybuilding. Yeah. which, you know, very few people watching this are. Uh, but then it wouldn't be t- TRT. It would just be testosterone like you'll be doing high doses of that yeah so yeah like i would say like when it drops below like 400 five you've above 500 i don't really see a point yeah it's but below 500 that's when you can kind of start to consider it also free t- free testosterone obviously matters uh but yeah i'd say like you just have to like do the blood work and monitor levels that's the first step honestly i think if you think about getting testosterone is just do the blood work and see where you're naturally at um, yeah it all starts with that yeah do the blood work maximize everything you can naturally for uh, weeks or uh, a couple of weeks or months even and if you've maximized everything and your testosterone is still low you still have low libido whatever yeah like do the trt why not yeah i mean if you were doing trt you're you're um like you would be basically where you are naturally you'd be like around like 800 900 yeah, I'm, I'm lower than 800. Like, I think I'm like between 700 and 800. It might, it might be like if you optimize, it might be at like a thousand. So you go up like 20%. Yeah. It it's like that guy, um, that guy, that guy, uh, more plates, more dates. No, no, no. Um, Jay Campbell, uh, how to beast, how to beast, how yeah. to beast. He also like uh, had the decent physique before, yeah, and then he started taking TRT and he like. It increased, it made some gains, but it was not like drastic. Right, like, right. It made some gains, and he said it himself like, yeah, I know this gain, like, newbie gain for like a couple of months, three months, four months, and then like, I, I stabilized at some some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, right. All right, what's next? What's the best exercise to achieve abs? Hanging leg raises. Uh, I like those. That's number one for sure. Yeah, those are good. I say number two. We would, but like done properly because a lot of people do. Can you expand on that? I'm probably one of those people who's doing it improperly. Uh, yeah, a lot of people <laughs> do it, with your whole body. Like, like a lot of people just like swing a lot. Yeah, I, I see that. Picture. You just like raise just the knees. Yeah. You don't even like raise yeah, the yeah, whole yeah, leg. Yeah, yeah. I've seen everything. Like I've seen people say to me, "Oh, hanging leg raises are so easy. I can do thirty. Oh, like, those are hard if you do them properly. Super hard if you do them properly. You can do like ten. It took me time to lift it. I had to start with hanging knee raises. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So hanging leg raises is a big one, followed up by uh, hanging leg raises is more like lower abs, and then followed up by cable crunches. Targets more like the upper abs. 
these two are like staple, like put together. Yeah. I, would, of, I would definitely agree with that. Yeah, a couple yeah. of times a week. But there. also, I think you also get hit like the side of the obliques. Yeah, but I, I, I'm saying like the essentials. But then if you want to get more fancy, yeah, yeah, yeah. obliques, uh, you can do like reverse crunches, like um, yeah, with yeah. like going first of all with one leg and then with the other for the obliques. But I'd say obliques are not like so important for aesthetics. I say like awesome. six pack is like oh, the, yeah, yeah. the big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I like the one with like the uh, with the cable, the weighted ones where you're going like this. Yeah, like that really hits the side abs well. I feel like like after that, your side abs are like burning. Yeah, and good. You can, I think anything where there's like weight where you can do progressive overload. Exactly. Any ab exercises that you can do like more than thirty reps, you can do fifty reps in a row. It's not that good. It's not that good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like with, because of the hanging leg raises, you can start adding weight to your. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's if you can do like 20 pounds weighted, like your abs are gonna be strong as fuck. Yeah, but the second component is cutting the fat. But that's another point. Like, if your abs, if you train them, and a lot of people overlook this, if you train them with like heavy resistance, it's like any other muscle loop. It's like your biceps, your chest, they're gonna become bigger. So they're gonna show up even if you have like a slightly higher amount of fat, right, right. they're gonna show up even then. But if you're, if you're, let's say, two people, like one of them has uh, trained abs and the other untrained abs, they can both be at 15% body fat, but the one that has the trained abs, the abs are going to show up, and the one that doesn't, they're going to be hidden uh, because they're small. Right. So it's obviously fat reducing it plays a big role, but the, the, how well you train your abs also like it's important. What's your favorite exercise for back? For back, I'm curious if you're gonna pick the same one as me. T Baro. T Baro. Okay. What about second favorite? Second favorite. Uh... Let's just talk because uh, I know there's the thickness and the width. Let's just talk width. Yeah. Um, second favorite. I'm a big fan of pull ups, weighted pull ups, ideally, if you can do those. Mm. Like, I'm a big fan of those. They're good. Uh, and then for the thickness, I do agree with you. Like T bar row. Do you, do you feel like those are better than barbell rows? Uh, bent over barbell rows? They're not better, but they are, are less taxing on uh, your um, lower back or? on your on your lower back. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, like when you go hard, and and you're natural. Like obviously, if people take testosterone, they recover more quickly. If you do like heavy barbell rows, heavy deadlifts, you are you are screwed for like three days. I've never been that big of a fan of deadlifts, honestly. Yeah, same. I think they're very over overrated. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For, I've never for, seen. All right. So this is this is kind of like the analogy I, I like. I've never seen a person in the gym who can do weighted pull ups, like you know, with like significant weight, like 50, 60, 70 pounds attached to them, <laughs> who didn't have a super wide back. But I've seen plenty of people <laughs> in deadlift crazy shit who look like they have no back. And they're fat as well. A lot yeah, of times. yeah. I've seen guys, like, fat guys, who can deadlift. <laughs> three times as much as I can, but I've never seen someone who can do like weighted pull-ups who didn't have like a super big back. Yeah, I think deadlift. Um, <coughs> <fuck>. <laughs> you really like my analogy. You're like choking. like, this is the best analogy ever. <laughs> yeah, like deadlift is, I don't know, for people that care about, you know, strength purely. They don't care about looking good and they just care about... Losers. <laughs> no, I, mean, I get power lifting. It's like yeah, power lifting, yeah. whatever. Uh, but if you don't care about your strength, if you just care purely about looking good, like deadlifts are not necessary. They're just gonna screw up your body for like three days. You're not gonna be able. Well, much more than that if you do them incorrectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even more uh, can bring a ton of different injuries. Like if you go heavy with improper form. Yeah, very, very unnecessary exercise in my opinion. There's a place for it. Like I have clients that they specifically ask for me, like, "Hey, can you include the death deadlift? I really like it." And I'm like, "Yeah, sure. Like, it's not gonna hurt. You're still gonna make like some back gains. Um, it's it's not like useless exercise. It helps, but it's not essential." It's right. just, what would you say? Are, like the um, like the five essential exercises in your opinion? Like if like let's say a client's like, "Dude, only give me five exercises. That's it. Like for some mm -hmm. weird reason." What would those be? Incline bench press. Okay, I would agree with that. Squat. I would agree with that, yeah. Uh, and I, I meant barbell. Um, barbell incline bench press, barbell squat, um, weighted pull-ups. Yes. 
lateral uh, dumbbell rat lateral raises. Okay. And yeah, overhead press in there, right? Let Why me not? think. Uh, it's hard to choose the last one. Um, dips. Dips? Yeah. Why dips? I mean, I like dips, but I'm just curious why. Would yeah, it's just, it's just like first because to grow your arms, like the triceps is two thirds of your arms. Right. Uh, so choosing between biceps and triceps, I would choose triceps. Mm -hmm. If you only gave me five exercises, I would choose the dips. You, you wouldn't put overhead uh, presses on the list? No, because you would be training a bit of them in the inclined bench press already. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. it's like front shoulders. It's like you train them a lot with all the pushing movements, with the bench press and mm. stuff like that. I like it's one of the most overtrained muscles, uh, like over with the hover press, whatever. Uh, the, for the front shoulder, and one of the most undertrained is the side, the side ones, mm. um, or the rear delt. Yeah, yeah, but the lateral is the lateral delts are, are even more undertrained. For you in particular, you genetically it's one example. You have like good side delts. Um, I don't know how much you train them, but you seem to have good. Yeah, I train them a bit, but honestly, I think part of that is TRT. Also, I didn't notice yeah. them blow up when mm -hmm. I started TRT. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so you don't need to train a lot, but like for eighty percent of guys, they need to train more side delts. Yeah, yeah, it gives you like the cap shoulder look. For me, the list will be largely similar. I agree on the. Uh, I agree on big part. I agreed on the pull-ups. I agree on the squats. Obviously, I agree on the incline press. The only thing I would add is either like T-bar rows or bend over barbell rows to mm. just to get that width of the back. And I mm -hmm. think that also hits like the uh, um, the um, the rear delts as well. So it's like a, it's like a cool combination and yeah. the lower back because you're bouncing yourself and the core a little bit in addition to the squats. I would probably put overhead press in there. Uh, that's not that's not even an exercise I go heavy on just because of my neck. But like if I didn't have a neck injury, like for sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's hard to pick five. I think with ten though, you can do a lot. Yeah. Like with ten, like if you throw in like barbell curls, like dips, uh, like one ab, like pure hanging like raises. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. with ten, you can get away with. I think five, you can get like 70 percent. Yeah. With ten, you can get like ninety five percent. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. All right. What's the next question? <laughs> just nerding out on fitness. <laughs> yeah, and also an underrated uh, muscle part to train is neck. For yeah, guys, you, you, were, you were talking about that. Can, can you give some good like uh, exercises? Yeah, just like uh, it's like the bicep, but just do curls like with a weight here. Just stand, just lay down on the floor, or not on the floor, on the bench. Just put a dumbbell here with a towel around it or something. And just do like curls like this. But for the love of God, start slow because you don't want to gain neck injuries. So exactly. start with, start exactly. with start slow, like yeah. warm up without weight, and uh, and then do the opposite. Let Have you ever heard of the iron neck? You, you might like that. Mm, no, I'm gonna send you a link too. The iron neck is basically it's a pretty cool device. It's designed for people with injuries, but even healthy. A lot of boxers do it because yeah. you know, like even if you have a healthy neck, like if you get punched in the face, yeah. like how your neck muscles can affect whether you're fucked or you're okay. So it's like basically this device. You put it around your neck, you connect it to the wall, and then you oh. challenge your neck. Uh -huh. And there's like they have different stability type of things. I think I've seen videos with some boxers like training with that. Yeah. Joe Rogan's a big fan of that. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. talks about it. a lot of people, a lot of boxers and stuff have it. Yeah. I think that's a good way to start just to because the neck is a very undertrained muscle. So if you get like right into it, I feel like some people could hurt themselves. So I would start very slow with that. But maybe Nathan can pull up on the live. It's insane like if you pull up an image like uh, uh thin neck versus thick neck there's some like side by side uh, side by side images they like photoshop guys that have like thick neck into like a thin one can, can you can you can you pull that up and it looks like two different people almost they pull up like hollywood actors and stuff like that mm. that have like a, a, a thick neck there's this big one that the actor that played Magic Mike, what's the name of the? Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, that guy, like he has a really thick neck, and like those are crazy. But I also people. think a lot part of it is if you tra if you train upper body, your neck will grow up to some extent. Depends on the per not for some people it doesn't. For mm. for others, like it does, but for some people it just doesn't grow. Like genetically, mm. it, it doesn't, and they need to train neck like a couple of times a week, and it plays a huge difference in their in their physique like you mm. look way more alpha uh you just look bigger just mm. because of your neck um yeah if, if he pulls up the images like the viewers yeah, will, well, one thing i personally do this is i don't think it's gonna apply for the average person but i train the uh deep neck flexor stabilization muscle so what i do is 
I'll do like, I'll lay on a bench and I'll just lift my head off oh, right? okay. while flexing this muscle and then just look to the side. And like, you, you won't be able to like, if you've never done it before, like you, you train the neck, so it'll be okay for you. But the average person, they won't be able to, you'll be surprised. Like your neck will start buckling, like literally shaking mm -hmm. after like 30 seconds because these deep neck flexors for the average person are super weak, yeah. but they affect like your stabilization. So like, you know, let's say like whatever, get into a car crash or something like that. Like this is what's going to make the difference between me getting injured and me having problems for life and me being okay. Exactly. Like these deep necks flexor stabilization, they're weak for the average person. Like if you want to find out if yours are weak, just all you guys have to do is just lay on a bench, tuck in, and then just lift off and see how long you can hold that. I guarantee you the average person won't be able to hold it for more than 20, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that it affected your voice tone also like uh – no, but I mean, it's hard to say because like how much of it is testosterone, how much of it is that? Well, you, you feel like training neck affects your voice? Maybe like a little bit, five or 10%. Really? Little, like, little that's bit. interesting. Not much. How, how, do you, how do you think that works? It just gets your like whatever like vocal cords you have, whatever. Like if you have bigger muscles, it's going to like make everything a little bit tighter. Mm -hmm. But it's not like a big, it's not going to make a big difference. <laughs> like, yo, bro, your voice completely changed. Yeah, I trained neck yesterday. Yeah, yeah I sound like my balls drop. Before I sound like this. Yeah, yeah. Did you pull that up yet? Yeah, I did. Was it crazy difference? I mean, what, did the, what was I supposed to pull? All right, never mind. Let's go to the next question. <laughs> we'll, 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 let, we'll let the guys Google. We'll let the guys Google themselves. Yeah. Yeah, if I knew that, if I remember the name of the guy of the, the magic mic, but I don't remember. Uh, Chatting Tatum. Chat, Chat, yeah, Chat, Shining Tatum. Tatum. Shining Tatum, yeah. That's the one. All right, what's the next one? How many live viewers do we have right now? No fucking way, really? Yeah. Usually we get like hundreds. Fitness, people don't like to. <laughs> they only want bitches. Oh, well, well, we'll get a lot of views on the repeat. Anyway, let's how take it. What do you guys think of the old days of Arnold Schwarzenegger and how, how are it different playing the gym? You want to go first? What's the question? Really? How, how does I guess the question is how do like the old days with like Arnold, the golden years of bodybuilding, in yeah. the gym compared to like gym culture now? Oh, okay. Oh, the main difference is that back then they cared more about aesthetics, oh, like yeah. in terms of bodybuilding, and now there's a lot of like just size. You know, it's just how big you can get. And back then, it was just it's like, become really fucking weird in my yeah. opinion. Like it used to be about like looking like like you look at arnold in his in the, when he was like in his peak you're like i want to look like that yeah you look at like the professional like the bodybuilding winners you're like i don't want to fucking look like yeah. that. yeah i mean maybe if you go like to divisions like the the classic like chris bumstead and stuff like that okay looks good but if you go at like the open bodybuilding division it's like freaks like uh it doesn't look good and yeah most guys don't want to look like that and most girls don't find it attractive yeah yeah um I, I, yeah. think it, I think it looks. I think I would rather look like I'm untrained than look like that. Like especially the HGH gut, mm -hmm. that looks fucking gross. It looks yeah. like you're carrying a baby. Yeah, it's, like, it's, I don't see how that's aesthetically pleasing at all. It's crazy. I think the judges like really fucked up with bodybuilding, like because they're, they're rewarding just pure size over like aesthetics. Yeah, but that's like and, the problem with having like dudes judging dudes. Like you need the females should be the judge. You need like <laughs> chicks to be judging the dudes. It can't just be like fucking. Dudes, especially straight dudes, judging other dudes because I'm yeah. like, oh no, this guy's bigger, so he gets first prize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it just like becomes this bro circle jerk. Yeah, and even you have for people watching that don't know, there is three three categories in, in like bodybuilding. There is men's physique, then there is classic, and then there is open bodybuilding. What's the difference? So men's physique, it's kind of like the it was originally created to be like this beach body type. Uh, it's like the smallest of the three categories. It's what most people, most normal people would achieve to to be. And then there's classic, which is like Arnold body type, which is like between the the men's physique and the open, but like has a decent amount of size, but like the aesthetics still. And open, it's just like as big as you can get pretty much. And uh, yeah, even like the, the two first categories, like men's physique and classic, Men's physique would be like more closer to to normal person like uh, size, but even now it's getting like bigger and bigger as years go by. Uh, yeah, it's just a tendency. Um, I think there should be only two categories: natty, not natty. That's 
and with, with like straight like UFC style, like UFC yeah. is pretty good about drug testing. Mm -hmm. Like they because they have the random drug test where they can come to like your house at any time. So like you really can't like at UFC get away with like you know. Uh, I mean, there's rumors that some fighters do to some extent, but yeah. it's not significant. Like they, the you know, the drug, uh, the steroid use in UFC used to be pretty significant. They hired, uh, it was Asado or whatever, and now it's like negligible, right? So I think they need to do that with the, again, so if, if someone wants to take steroids, that's fine, but then you're competing in a different category against natural guys because there's no way you can be natural even with the best genetics and the best training and win a bodybuilding competition, yeah. right? So you have to, so if you just separate those two out, like, okay, you're going to do steroids, you compete in different, you know, uh, you're not disqualified, you're just competing against different people. Uh, I think there should only be two categories and it should be that and they should reward aesthetics, not just pure size. Yep. Like yeah. the the size thing because it's just it just it just becomes ridiculous. Like it just it looks bad. No one finds it attractive, and these people die from heart attacks at the age of forty anyway. It's like it's just like a lose lose situation. Well, like you look gross, you feel gross. Like a lot of those bodybuilders, they're like, dude, like, uh, like you watch the um, what's his name, Dorian Yates interview. He has like a million injuries. He's like, I can't even move around. Like he's yeah. like he's like all kinds of fucked up. Yeah, look up Ronnie Coleman. Like he has to be in a in a wheelchair. Yeah, right? they have all these like fucked up injuries. They. A lot of them die from heart attacks. It's just like, and they don't even look good. I understand if you're yeah. doing all that, but you look really fucking sick for like 10 years, but you're yeah. not even really looking good. It's become like this such a weird thing, which I think it wasn't initially. Initially, I think it was a good thing during like uh, um, Arnold's day. Yeah, there were some steroids they were using that, but it was like the goal was still like, look, how can I look my best? Mm -hmm. It wasn't just like, how can I be as big and fucking dilated as possible? Yeah, it was actually Darden Yates that changed that oh, in, was the, in the 90s, yeah. Like everything, all the way until the 90s, it was more about the aesthetics and everything. And then Dorian Yates kind of like turned the turned the, the, the thing to more to size. Yeah. But if it keeps going, like where's it going to be in like 20 years? Like you're just going to have these like fucking hulks walking around. Yeah. Like you just win a competition and you die from a heart attack an hour later. Like, <laughs> like, 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 Let's see. Uh, oh, now I can finally die. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like peel over. Like there's a limit to what the human body can uh, uh, can tolerate unless they come up with some like crazy new shit. Like you're just going to have people like dying like the day after the competition. We have become like, because every year they get bigger and bigger and more ridiculous. In 10 years, it's just going to be, plus all, every year there's like new shit that comes on the market. Mm-hmm. They're just going to be looking like fucking hulks. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, man. Let's yeah, see. I'm kind of curious. All right, next question. Let's take like two or three more. How can I target my serratus anterior? What motion activator activates that? I don't even know what that is. I have to take a look at the guy. Uh, it depends. It depends. What is the series anterior? A series anterior... Do you know what muscle is? Yeah, so technical. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming it means like back, so like something yeah. like one of the back muscles. It's like actually upper rib. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Actually, oh, like here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. I, actually, I actually have an answer on that. I think with that, it's all like the plus push-up. So like you're doing push-up and then you're doing a plus, mm. right? That's when you train that rib. Like this, this area here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. What the first is like? Why does he want to train? No, that so it much? does. It does. Like if you have, I I know exactly what he's talking about. If it's like some people, it's natural it looks yeah. good, but if it's underdeveloped, it does look bad. And when you would train it, it uh -huh. does look a lot better. Yeah. When you lift your hands up, it, it's just a big difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah. I think certain kind of push-ups can can train like that. The plus. Uh, and also archer push-ups can train that uh, what, part. What's, what's an archer? Archer is like when you go like to one side oh, okay. and you do one. And then you go do the one side with the, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that can target this area as well. Um, yeah. yeah the, one, the only exercise I know is the plus, and you can do like weighted. What I used to do is I used to put a 40 pound plate on my back mm -hmm. and you just do push ups like that. You can, you know, keep adding weight. Just that's more actually a partner because they put weight on your back. Yeah. And then you just do like a push up and then you go plus, like, right? And mm -hmm. that's when you do that. That's when you feel this muscle working. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's, I'm, I'm sure there's more exercise. That's the only one I know. Yeah, my head. but it's very rare for someone to need to train that in particular. I mean, I'm sure some people. Um, it does look better though. Like, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't focus on it, but like when that muscle is developed, it, yeah, like, yeah. it looks good. Like because if you train your lats enough, if if you have size on your lats, it's gonna like this overcome like yeah, this area. You know yeah, what I mean? To some extent. It, it's all. It's mostly needed when you have underdeveloped lats, which mm. shouldn't be happening in the first place. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, what's the next one? What do you recommend for fast recovery for muscle soreness, especially for quads? Something that, apart from what I already talked about, like the, the hot cold plunge, uh, nutrition, obviously, you're having your post workout meal with the ideal macros uh, for recovery. Foam rolling also helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Foam rolling, like every day um, after you work out for sure, um, helps. I notice a big difference when I foam roll and when I don't. So foam rolling. Just like is, moving the muscle and like rubbing the, the ass. Yeah. Yeah. If you can afford like massage, those help too. Yeah. So that's foam rolling. Massage guns also are pretty good at uh, on the muscle that you trained. Massage, obviously, if you can afford it. Stretching a little bit, but not so much. A little bit, yeah. Not so much after the workout. Um, yeah, those are at sleep. Sleep is so important, like sleeping. Like if you're going to the gym, if you're pushing your body, you need to sleep more than the average person. Like you see people, like they do nothing. They are sedentary and they say, oh, I can get by with seven, six hours of sleep mm -hmm. and it's fine. But if you're trained, it's totally different. Like your body needs at least eight hours, maybe nine for some people um, if you want to recover faster. so I think also light movement. So like if you're like, let's say you train the uh, shoulders and your shoulders are killing. Okay, let's let's do legs, right? Because you saw about legs. Let's say your legs are killing you. Just doing like light, like, like doing like a light swim or something like that yeah. where you're moving the muscle without resistance and you're circulating like the blood and shit. I think that can be pretty beneficial. It helps. It helps. And that's also walking. Yeah, it helps yeah. Like much. light movement where like the, the, it's just like moving around like with yeah. shoulder. Yeah, like swimming or something like that. Like that would be good. Yeah. Uh, I just noticed that when I move, like when something is really sore, I just move it around a little bit. It just like circulates and it gets the blood in there and then like it covers it faster. 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah, some people think, oh, for, to recover faster, I just lay down in my couch, but no. That's not, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Like, I think the movement, and obviously, cryo will help to some degree, sauna. Yeah. Uh, anything, I think anything that stimulates the blood to that area, which there's multiple ways to, like, do that. Like, if you yeah. mind, cryo will do that, sauna will do that. They all get blood because they're just doing different ways. When you cryo, all the blood, so the way cryo works is all the blood rushes to your organs, right, because it thinks you're freezing to death. Right, but then when you come out, that's when the benefits actually happens when you come out because you're like, oh shit, I didn't die, and then all the blood flushes back. Uh, actually, nice. yeah, and but sauna works almost like differently because it just like you know circulates because you're hot and you start sweating, the blood starts moving around. Another thing, if you have an injury, I found this to be super uh, effective: blood flow restriction therapy. Have you ever heard of that? I've done it. Yeah, you like you're a fan of that? Uh, it worked when I did it. It worked. So. It works. I did it for like I had elbow problems. I did a few sessions of that. And my elbow problems completely went away. Mm -hmm. But again, it works the same principle. It cuts off the blood and the blood rushes. And yep. That like makes a big difference. In the... I think one day they should like have some kind of machine that just, I guess they probably might have that already. But like, we're just like, <laughs> you're like fucking, I don't know. You like plug it in just forces all your blood to move around like super fast. Yeah. And uh, man, I like, I, I take a look at like my client's journeys and my journey and injuries are the main cause of you like not getting to the, reason, oh, yeah, the goals you want yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not like lack of motivation it's not like not sticking to the diet well they all it's, kind of go hand in hand because you get injured and then you start losing motivation yeah like if you if you manage to go a year without an injury or two years you're going to be able to see like massive results should we talk about some uh, basic injury prevention uh, recommendations yeah, before your workouts, always uh, warm up, especially if you're in a cold uh, in a country, in a country city, uh, in a cold city, whatever. In Miami, it's not so much of a problem because let's say I go walking from my house to my gym, like I get there kind of warmed up already. My whole body is, is warm. So I just need to warm up um, the particular joints I'm going to train. So I get an elastic band. Uh, let's say I'm, I'm going to do to train chest, uh, to, to start with chest. I I warm up like my joints that are going to be moving. Uh, this one, this one, uh, in different kinds of movements with the elastic bands. And uh, I start, oh, let's say, incline bench press. I start just with the barbell, doing mm -hmm. like 20 reps. Then I add a little bit of weight and I do like 15 reps. I do like three warm up sets. Okay, all right. You, before you I get... take it seriously. Yeah. <laughs> man. When I realize like how much injuries can be like detrimental 
um, I think it's really serious right now. Yeah. yeah, the few ones I will add to that is I'm not a big fan of like the one rep maxes or anything. I think it's pure yeah. nonsense. I don't do any of that. I don't give a shit what my one rep max is. I don't think like you're not going to gain muscle from doing one rep. So I don't even fuck with one rep maxes. I, I just think that's like an injury waiting to happen. Uh, not ego lifting. That's what I used to do when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Like when I was, I was like, I'm squatting like heavyweight, but I'm always like, Barely squat. I was like, well, <laughs> it was like when I like fixed my squat form, I could only do like half the weight. That shows you how bad my form must have been. So just completely like taking the ego out of it and just like focusing on form, I think is a huge thing. And then you know, when you get good form, the weight you can do like most of the time just drops dramatically. Uh, but actually, but that's where you get the muscle growth, and that's also where you get the injury prevention. Um, not going into those like I like to keep in like the eight to twelve rep range. Yep, like seven. I don't really like to do like the five reps. Because then you're gonna, you know, race the weight to compensate for that. Um, uh, going to failure, I think, can be okay as long as your form is good. But anything where you get into a position where your form starts really going downhill, uh, which is usually near the end, that's when I, I like, I don't like to do that extra rep with shitty form. Uh, that's like really to be on the safe side because that's when you get. And also, I think another big one that not a lot of people do is training the uh, small stabilizer muscles. So, for example, for shoulders, one of the biggest thing is um, your infraspinatus muscle in your rotator cuff. So that's like doing exercises like this, not exciting at all, like super boring. But doing that like once or twice a week, you train the infraspinatus. Yeah. That's going to protect your shoulder when you're doing those heavy overhead presses. Uh, you know, just doing those like uh, the shoulder stabilization stuff. So when you're doing like with a uh, kettlebell, but you're holding like here, right, and you're stabilizing, it's using. So like a lot of the stabilization exercise, which again, you don't have to do often just once or twice a week, that can be a big difference, I think. Yep. Yeah. I would add all that, but uh, yeah, injuries are definitely huge. All right, let's take like two more questions. Question. Being physically fit is a great thing, but do you, do you young, gener uh, young uh, generation, uh, are you, Jesus, nice question. Uh, do you, uh, the young generation, are you concerned about prostate issues? Be, Being physically fit? Only if you're on testosterone. Why would that be a, if you're training naturally, why would that be an issue? <laughs> yeah. yeah sure. I mean, if you're, if you're taking testosterone, I can see why there's a correlation between prostate cancer and testosterone, but not if you're training naturally. Yeah, and even taking taking a uh, uh, drug even taking anything like is if you're taking it with like the wrong doses or, or anything like yeah i mean i'm slightly i mean i am like me personally like i don't think this question applies to you because you're natural i don't see how natural training will increase your prostate risk at all it uh, won't but uh with me being on testosterone a little bit but i did all the you know the blood work and i didn't have any like uh, prostate cancer risk or anything like that. I try to do like, I'm pretty diligent about blood work and actually any good functional medicine doctor will force you to do, uh, when you're on testosterone, will force you to do like, um, I think once every three months or one every six months blood work. Any doctor who's like kind of lax about that is probably not that good of a doctor. Yep. Um, like they'll be like, yo, before I fill up your next prescription, you have to do this blood work. They'll, nice. like, they'll force it on you, uh, which can be annoying, but it's a good thing in the end. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, I think a lot of it just depends on your genetics and like your risk. So I do think you should do the blood work beforehand. And again, like I said before, I don't think, uh, steroids, I think are, you know, a lot of people don't have the, uh, genetic capacity to handle that TRT. I think most people should be okay with that, but not everyone. Like if you have a high predisposed cancer risk, you probably shouldn't fuck with that. I just, you know, like in terms of that, my family, like we don't really have much cancer in my family. Um, uh, so, and yeah, so it wasn't really concerned for me. So I, I just think it just there's no blanket statement. You have to like do like the blood work and see what your you know your uh, no genetic and blood risks are rather than just like yeah yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean I'm concerned about any potential health problems, but some I'm a lot more concerned with than others because like I actually have a realistic chance of getting them versus like other ones. Like no one's my family ever had them, so like I'm not too worried about it. Uh, all right, let's take one last question. I broke the tip of my finger and normally do CrossFit. I likely be MI in other months. How should I program this uh, free weights to minimum? He'll, I'm missing in action, I think he means. So he broke his finger doing CrossFit. Um, how should uh, he? Yeah, how should he proceed? With his broken. Finger? I mean, is he recovered or? No, he said he's had like another month to go to until oh. his finger. And, and he can train. Um, I guess. 
I mean, I'm trying to think, what can you do and what can't you do with a broken finger? I mean, there's some things you can definitely do. Uh, oh, you know what you can do? Uh, there, there's like, it's cool because nowadays they have workarounds for a lot of stuff. So for example, pull-ups, you might think is off limits, but actually there's these things that I use. They're like claws. You hook them up here and here and you don't even have to use your fingers. It's just like you claw on. Uh -huh. So that's a way he can get around doing pull-ups and like a lot of actually like bar, like that's, that's, a, that's what I think he should do yeah. is get those uh, claw things. And then he can do a lot of the same stuff, but they just won't involve his uh, pinky. His yeah. Fingers. I mean, it depends on the guy. Like, on some cases, like it's better to just take a couple of months. Yeah, 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 yeah. You Dep know, and it depends on where it's at. So it really depends on each individual. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of people, I just recommend them to stop training for until they recover, like to, up to a certain point, and then um, and then get back. Otherwise, like if you're pushing through like an injury, it might just aggravate it, and then you just have to be off for more time it's a mess so yeah but check yeah. check out the claw things that i ha i talk about them in my last gen video uh, i show you what they look like but they're pretty cool and i think that can definitely help you a lot uh, let's take one last question i want to get to like let me end it off on like a really good question but no pressure or anything <laughs> but it's gotta be a really good question really good how to get big traps trt no, i'm just kidding <laughs> yeah, if you if you take uh, exogenous testosterone, it's gonna it's gonna like boost your traps massively. But if you're natural, it's just the basic uh, exercises: the shrugs, the Smith machine shrugs, dumbbell shrugs. You have to do them sh like shoulders in general, like traps and shoulders. It's a muscle that you have to train more frequently than than let's say legs mm. or, or chest usually. So traps, you would have to train them you know, two, two, even three times a week. Uh, high reps, like I'm talking like 15, 20 reps, and, uh, and go to failure. And you have to go to failure. You have to feel the burn. You have to do drop sets. Uh, yeah, for traps, you have to attack them really with high, super high volume for it to grow. Mm. Yeah. All right, guys, this is a dope live stream. So if people want to follow you, get more information, uh, sign up for your coaching, where should they go? Yeah, just go to my social media, Instagram, for example, Adolfo Tex. Uh, you can send me a message if you have any questions there. Uh, I also have YouTube and TikTok with the same username. And uh, yeah, tons of videos on these topics we talked about uh, on all these platforms. Uh, even if you're not, uh, if you're not going to reach out to me, you can watch the videos. So uh, yeah. yeah, definitely check out TikTok because uh, our collaboration video is going to be dropping there soon. So you don't yeah. miss that. Um, yeah, man. Thank you for joining us. I think this is a good live stream. We got we answered a lot of like good questions. I think so. Uh, hopefully, a lot of guys find value in this. All right, guys. Stay tuned. Make sure you smash that subscribe button because we got more awesome videos dropping soon. Until next time. Peace.